Angular has released the output method in the version 17.3, which basically completes the signal APIs. And we are going to build this particular applications using all those APIs. So we are going to use the input signals. We are going to use the model input signals, and we are also going to use the output method. But on bonus, you will also learn how to use an effect with signals as well. So what can you do with this application? You can type a new message and that gets added to the chat. You can type, hit enter or type and click this button and it does that. And you can also delete your own created message. So whenever you delete, it basically asks you for confirmation and then you can delete the messages just like this. Now, all of this is going to be covered with several diagrams to understand the whole flow. So watch the video till the end and let me know in the comments how you feel about it. Let's get started. So first of all, you need to go to GitHub to this particular URL and you can find that in the description of this video and you can click code and copy the link from here. Then you go to your terminal and type git clone and then you can paste the url which will basically create the folder for this application within your project once you're done you can open this into vs code for example you can see i've already opened the project in vs code and you can go to view terminal to open the terminal and run npm install once you're done with npm install just run npm start which will run the ng serve command to serve the application on the browser and as soon as you have done that make sure that you are on the start branch so you can do git check out and start so i'm already on the start branch so it says i'm already there but you can do that to make sure that you are on the start branch to get started now if you look at the application you'll see that we have some messages being shown within this phone mock and you have an input if i type something hit enter nothing really happens if i click the button nothing happens at this moment so this is the starter code and we're going to start from here so first of all, we need to understand the hierarchy of the components in an Angular application. The topmost component is called app component. And inside that we have the room, which is the page right now. So if you look at the application, you'll see we are on the room route. And inside the room route, we are using two components, chat, which renders all the chat messages and then chat input, which is the text box. So if you right click here, click inspect and go to elements, you will see that we have the app room component, which contains the app chat, which is the chat highlighted. And then this particular input, which is used to send message or create more messages. Now I already have a lot of things set up so we can skip to just the signals part to understand that better and don't have to go through everything from scratch. So the first thing that I want to focus on is rendering the messages. So right now in the application, we have completely hard coded template, which renders all these messages, but we want to render this using an array dynamically. And for that, we are going to do two particular things. First, we are going to put the messages in the room component. So the state or the variable that contains all the messages lives inside the parent room component. And we pass that inside the chat component to render those so this will use the input signal to do that so if we go to our components folder inside the chat component you will see that we have this particular div or all these divs as you can see and these are just hard-coded text messages that say how are you doing or hey and this is just repeated now this doesn't use any variables from outside or any signals so as we discussed we are going to create inside the room component the signal to create those messages so as I mentioned, that we are going to create this in the room component. So if I go to the room component right here and inside the TypeScript file, you can see that this component is completely empty. So I'm going to create our first messages signal array. So here, let's quickly start that. And you will see that I've pasted some code here and we are using the UUID version four. We already have this inside the package JSON. So if you try to search here UUID, you will find that we are using the package to generate unique IDs for the project. So I'm going to quickly go and import this at the top and then we can import the signal and the chat message interface as well. This chat message basically tells what is the structure of each message. So each message has an ID, a text, a user ID on who created it and the time that it was created. So by just doing this, I can quickly add the messages. Now to show each message on the left or the right side, we need to understand which user created the message. So this one on the right side is all the messages that I'm going to create. And this one is the other contact. So we are going to create variables or IDs for myself and the contact. So we are quickly going to go here and say my ID. And here we are going to generate this using UUID. So here I can simply say UUID v4, and then this generates a UUID for myself. I'm going to do the same for contact ID. So let's quickly do contact ID, UUID, V4. And now we are done with creating the messages array. You can see that this is similar to what we rendered there, but now in the form of an array. Now, as we mentioned that we're going to create the signal in the room component, but we are going to pass that as an input signal in messages in the chat component. So let's do that now. So I'm going to save this file and I'm going to go to our chat component in the TypeScript file. And I'm going to make this accept this 
as an input signal so here let's quickly say we are going to have messages we are going to call input and this is going to come from the angular core as you can see right here and then we can define this is going to be chat message array and then we can initialize this with an empty array now the reality here is that i always want to pass the messages array so i don't really need to initialize this at all i would rather use input dot required which means that this has to be passed from the parent otherwise this is going to throw errors as you will see just now so if i save this and go back to the browser you will see here that now it says required input messages from the component chat component must be specified and that is because right now if i go to my room component where i use the chat i'm not really passing messages and this is what we wanted typescript to tell us what's wrong so here now i'm supposed to pass the messages input as messages signal so if you see right now we have room component which defines this messages signal which is an array of chat messages i want to pass that just like this inside the chat component now if i go back to my app you can see that there are no errors but this is still rendering the hard-coded data so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to our html right here the chat component html and instead of all these hard-coded components i'm going to actually use the array that we have just created so i'm just going to select all of these and just keep one of those and then we can basically move this inside a for block which is part of the new angle control flow so here we can say the message of messages that we have retrieved and we track each message by message.id because each message's id is absolutely unique now if i save this and go back to the browser you can see that all of the messages look like they are from my contact and not myself and that is because we are not really identifying this here at all which message belongs to who so not only we need to pass the messages from the room component which we do right here we also need to pass the id of this current user that we are talking about so I have to pass my ID into the chat component as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and then accept this as an input as well. So I'm going to add my ID as an input signal as well. And I'm going to make this required because we need this absolutely all the time. So this is going to be of type string and I'm going to just save this. Now you can see that the room component here says that we need to pass this, the my ID component, and I can do the same thing here. So here I can say my ID and I can pass the my ID value just like this. Now that we have this, we can go back to our chat component and inside here, we can distinguish which message belongs to which person. So we are going to keep the chat class right here, but the chat start, this is going to be dynamic. So I'm just going to remove this and I'm going to add the ng class right here. And you can see that I'm saying the chat start only applies when the ID is not my ID, which means that it is going to be on the left side. And if it's my message, it's going to be chat and which is going to be on the right side. And if I go here, you can see already that the messages are now distributed left and right, but they all are the same color. And that is because you can see each message is a chat bubble secondary. So we also need to distinguish this between chat bubble secondary and primary based on whose message this is. So I'm also going to remove this hard coded class and add an ng class right here. And now you can see that we apply the secondary if it's not my message and primary if it is my message. So if I go here now, you can see that this looks much more like it. So all my messages that I've sent look like this. However, I'm not sure if you notice, but all the messages show exactly the same thing. How are you doing? We should probably use the messages text. So here we are going to use the message dot text properties. So let's say message dot text. And now you can see that I have the correct messages being shown just like this which means that if i go to my room component and here if i just leave the two messages and remove for example all the rest of them just like this then you'll see only two messages so our parent component room component is passing this value and the child component is rendering so i'm going to put this back but one of the problems right now is if you look at the app right now when i refresh the messages that are shown are the oldest messages rather than the latest messages so this should always be scrolling to bottom when we load the page and we already have the mechanism to do that. However, we don't have the functionality yet put here. For example, the chat component itself has this scroll container, which provides the element that we can use to scroll it to the bottom. So all we need to do is to reference this chat component inside our room component and then make it work. So what we can do is we can also use another signal based API called view child to get the chat component and then basically using the scroll functionality from there. So what I can do here is that I can say chat component and here I can say view child and here I can provide the chat component class just like this. Now this is always going to be there. So I also want to make this required. So this is always there and we don't have to check null or undefined. 
And then what I want to do is to create a function that allows us to scroll to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function called scroll chat to bottom. And this is going to get the chat component. So instead of chat box, I'm going to say chat component. So we get the chat component just like this. And then we can access the scroll container, which is this one that I just mentioned. And then we basically do element dot scroll to and then element to scroll hide, which basically takes this to the bottom. Now we want to do this all the time. We want to do this when the component is first rendered or the page is reloaded. And we also want to do that whenever there's a new message coming in. Now to render this when the app starts, what we can do is create a constructor right here. And then inside the constructor, we are going to use a method called after next render. So this will run the first time this component is rendered. And here we can say this dot scroll chat to bottom. Now, if I refresh the page, you can see always it goes to the bottom. So if I put it to the top and refresh, you can see it goes back to the bottom. Awesome. The next thing that we want to do is to add new messages. And this involves multiple steps. So let's go through that one by one. The first thing that we want to understand is that to add a new message, we want to have the chat input, which is the text area, basically be able to give the new text that we have and then add to the messages array. Now, as we understand from the previous section, we have the messages array as a signal in the room component. So whatever chat input does, it has to provide the text or the new message back to the room component so we can add that to this array. So all the data is centered in the room component and other components merely just, you know, forward them back or process them. So for adding a new message, we are going to put a new message as a signal inside the room component and we are going to pass that as a model inside chat input now this is the second type of signal that we are looking at the first type was just a normal input using the input method but now we are going to use the new model method for two-way data binding and i'm going to show you why so in the chat input we need to declare a model input just like this and we're going to pass this one from room to chat so we need to go inside our chat input component here and we are going to create this model input. So we are going to call this new message or actually we are going to call this value. And here you can say model and this model is going to come from angular core, which is just here. And then we can define that, that this is going to be either a chat message or null in this case. And by default, its value, if you look at this is going to be undefined, which is possible, but we are going to make this required because this should always be there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing here in the room component. But if I go to the room component HTML, you're going to see that it cries already that, yeah, we need to provide the value here. So we need to create this new message property or signal inside the room component. So I'm going to go to room component and here we are going to create new message, which is going to be a signal. And in this one, we can simply say it is going to be either a chat message or null for that matter. And now that we have this, we can pass this via the template. And we're going to assign this with null in the beginning. Now I can go here and now I can pass this. So I can say value and here I can say new message. Now, when we talk about a model here or a model based input, we are talking about two way data binding. Now, how does two way data binding work by default? By default, when you want to pass a value inside here, which is one way from the parent to the child component, you provide an attribute here. And Angular by default provides you an event emitter with the same model name, but with the change suffix. So here you can see automatically we got this value change event. Now, if I wanted to do this the old way or the longer way, I would basically do it like this. I would probably say new message dot set. And here, whatever value is coming from there, I'm going to be able to get it here. So here I'm providing the value by getting the value and providing it. And here I'm updating it if the child input changes that. Now we can easily monitor if this new message changes inside the parent component, the room component. So here, what I can do is right after this new message, I can create an effect. So here I can say, for example, something like new message change equals. And here I can use an effect from Angular core. And here I can just console log, for example, if anything changes. So I can say new message changed, for example. Now, this means that if I go to my chat input component and somehow change this value later on, it's going to do that. For example, I can go here and say constructor and maybe I can just change this value after set timeout. So I can say set timeout and here let's do this after one second. And here I can say this dot value dot set and here I can create a new message. So here I can say text. The text is going to be, for example, test one to three 
here we have the id let's give this one to three id and here we can say my id for example or the user id that it needs one two three four and that's pretty much it and now we have done that we can go to room component ts and here we can also log the value so the effect works with that so here i can say this dot new message and i just need to get this value since this is an effect that works with a signal anytime this value changes or the signals value changes this effect is going to be triggered so if i go back to my app now and go to console refresh you can see i got one message in the beginning where the value was null but after one second new message got changed and i got the new value and that is because the chat input changes that we can also go inside sources and see this in real action so we can say room.component and here i can put a breakpoint right here and then i can go to chat input component and here i can put a breakpoint just like this as well so if i refresh now you'll see that initially it comes here when the value of new message is null then after one second it goes inside here now it's setting the value which is test one two three blah 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 and if i hit play automatically it comes inside the effect and here now you can see the value is not logged yet and if i go forward there you go you can see the value so as we discussed the variable still exists inside the room component the chat input is just changing that because the model binds this two ways however instead of doing this long form thing what we can do is we can use the shorter two-way data binding so here i can use the two-way data binding just like this which i think we call banana in a box syntax which means that i don't really need to provide this at all and then instead of using the getter method i can just pass the signal as it is if i save this now and go back to my application you'll see the exact same thing happening so now it's coming into the set timeout and if I hit play, it is still triggers the effect. And if I go forward, you can see the message. So everything is working exactly the same. Now that we have this done, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to provide the value of the text from the chat inputs text area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my chat component input. And since for every message that we are going to create, we need the user ID. I'm also going to make this mandatory to get the my ID from the room component as an input so here i can simply say input dot required or input dot required and then this is supposed to be a string and this should always be there and then instead of this i should be using this dot my id so here i can simply say this dot my id instead of that now for this text i need an input value that i can bind with this text area so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to call this input val and here I can basically create this as a signal or a simple property doesn't really matter but I'm going to use signal because we are using change detection on push so I'm going to say this is going to be a signal of type string and by default it's going to be empty and here instead of the text I can rather use this dot input val as the text value and then the id can be generated via this uuid method so I can basically use uuid v4 to create a new id and finally what I can do and I'm going to use the getter method because this is also a signal and finally I can say created at and that is going to be date dot now now in this whole example I don't really use created at but it's still good to have it now that we have this let's create a function to call instead of this constructor set timeout because we want to do this when the user actually submits a new message or for example when we basically type something and click this or press enter we want to do that so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a function called send message and in that I'm going to do the exact same thing that I'm doing here but just a bit nicely. Once I've sent a message I'm going to reset the input to empty but we are going to have a look at that. So I'm going to remove this constructor from here. Now that we have a method that we can call whenever a new message is typed and the sent button is clicked we can basically use that inside here. So what I'm going to do here inside the chat input template is I'm going to put an ng submit here so I can basically say ng submit and I can use send message here and just call this function and that means that I'm going to be able to then use those values now you will notice that here in the send message function we get the message string and the event this is to make this function a bit more pure even though the value comes from outside it's not really pure but yeah that's the best I could do so if I go here, I can send the message here as well. So I can say this dot input val or we don't really use this here. So we can rather do input val as a message. And then we are also going to send the event just like this. Now that I've selected this, what I'm going to do is actually copy this. 
and we are going to do the same thing on enter as well but let's try the send button first so if i look at this it says the id from the room component needs to be passed so if i go to my room component template here we also need to pass the my id so my id is going to be my id and i'm just passing this value and this is by default a string and not a signal so this is being passed just as it is now if i try to say test and hit send you can see that it automatically came inside this effect inside the parent component so what happened is that the chat input we sent a message we set the value of this value model and it automatically changes the new message and then it runs the effect so so far this is what we have done we have created these two things then we also provided via the template the two-way data binding via this message then what we have done is that we have set the this dot value dot set when we send the message and finally we need to listen via an effect so whenever the value dot set method is called inside chat input the effect in the room automatically retrieves that information and adds the new message in the ui right now our effect just logs the value so if i go back to my app you will see that if i hit this you can see the new value came in with the created ad, with the user ID, with the ID and the text. Now you can see the test value here doesn't really show the actual test that was written in the input. And that is because the input val that we created here has never been assigned to the text area. So here we need to pass it with ng model. So here we can basically do this. Again, another banana in the box, ng model. And here we can say input val. And since this is a signal, it can directly be bound to ng model automatically. Now, remember, if you were to do this in your new application, you need to have the forms module already in the component you're using the ng model. Now that we have this, this should work fine. So if I go here, if I say test one, two, three, four, five, five, and if I hit this, you can see that now I actually get the text value as well, just like this. Now you see that this text input was not emptied after the message was sent and this I think we should do that so I'm gonna go to my chat input component and uncomment this line so when we basically set a message or send a message this is going to empty the text area again so if I try this now and hit send you can see that I see the console log and this input is automatically emptied now the part that's remaining is that I'm setting the value. There's an effect in the room component, but this doesn't add the new message. So let's do that. Now, instead of this effect where we are just logging this, I can also add this. So here we are saying that the messages array that we have right now, we are going to update it. We're going to get the current messages array and we are going to add the new message in the end of this array. So we are taking all the messages before or from before and we are just adding this new message so you can copy the syntax as it is now if i just save this you will see that if i go to my app and if i try to refresh you see that this doesn't really work and even though i have not actually done anything at all it is still triggers because even when the new message is null the effect is triggered and we don't want to do that so we're going to put a condition here and here we can say if this dot new message is null then we are just going to return from here and not do anything at all. Now you can see that the value is null. The effect does not really trigger. That's good. But if I do test here, now you can see an error and that is writing to signals. It's not allowed in a computed or in an effect. And this is by design to avoid, you know, certain use cases or edge cases that can cause performance issues or, you know, completely mess up the state. But if you know exactly what you're doing, then what you can do is that you can use this flag allow signal writes inside the effect options. And that is what we are going to do here. So the effect takes the first argument as the function. And the second argument here is the options. So here I can provide an object and say, allow signal writes to true. And now if I go to my app, write something and just click this, you can see that a new message was just added with whatever I wrote here. Now you'll notice something interesting. If I just add something and hit this button, nothing really happens. And that is because we have added a new message, but the scroll doesn't move. So we probably need to move the scroll. So what I'm going to do is right after setting this update, I'm going to just say this dot scroll chat to bottom. Now, if I go to my app again and write something, hit enter, you're going to see it still doesn't work. Now you will ask why that is. And that is because before even a new change detection cycle runs and the message is added, the scroll happens before that. And we need to do this after we have run a chain detection cycle. 
So, so in order to work around this, you can either use the all time favorite hacky approach to put this into a set timeout, which just runs after everything has been idle, or you can run a chain detection cycle yourself. So if I wanted to run the chain detection cycle to avoid a set timeout here, I could just say CD ref or chain detection ref equals, and I can inject the chain detection ref. So change detection ref just like this. And here before I'm scrolling to bottom, I can say this dot CD ref dot detect changes. And this will run a chain detection cycle. So we will have the messages in there before the scroll is happening. So if I try to add this now and just hit this, you can see automatically it's scrolled and we did not have to do anything weird in this case. Now it also depends on if you consider the change detection ref weird. But now that we have this, we also want to reset the new message variable. So what we are doing here is that whenever the chat input sends us a message, we create a new message and we assign it to the new message signal. And then we add it to the messages array. Once we have added it to the array, we don't really need to keep this anymore. So we are going to set this to null. So what I'm going to do here is that just do new message and set and null just to reset everything for the new message to happen. And that's pretty much it. But I'm not really happy so far because what happens if I just want to type a message and hit enter? It doesn't do anything. And since this is a text area, the user actually has to has to click this button, which is not a great user experience in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the chat input and apart from the ng submit that happens here, I'm also going to put this here on the key up so I can use key up dot enter. And here I'm going to do the same thing. Send message input val and the event. Now, if I go here and refresh and for example, type something here, hit enter, you can see automatically everything worked. The message got pushed. We got the scroll down and the input was empty as well. And that means we are done with adding a new message. The final thing that we need to do in this particular tutorial is deleting a message and this is going to be so much interesting. But just to emphasize how we will achieve this is that the room still contains the messages array as we have seen before. The messages array is going to be filtered out if we try to delete a particular message, but the chat component has to provide that information. So all the messages are being rendered inside chat. The chat component needs to tell the room component which one to delete and then the room component will do that. So whenever we have a click happened on a delete of a chat message, this is going to emit an output using the new output method introduced in Angular 17.3. And then the room component is going to listen to that output and call a method that basically filters out the messages array. So to implement that, we are going to go to our chat component and you will see that at the bottom, we have this div, which is essentially the delete button. We are going to move this inside this whole for block. So for each chat, we are going to display a particular button. So I'm going to cut this from here and I'm going to put this right after this div, which is for the messages. So I can just do this and I'm going to format the document. So here we have now a button for each chat message, which you can see right here. So if you start doing a mouse over on each button, you will be able to see this delete button. Now, the reality is that I should not be able to delete the messages from other people. I should only be able to do that for my particular message or the messages that I've sent. And if you remember, if I type anything, this is the message on the right side. That's mine. So in order to implement that, we can put this inside in if block. So here I can say if and the if will say if we have the message dot user ID that matches my id so here if i say my id which is essentially a signal then i can put this div inside here and that means if i go here and mouse over the other messages you don't see that but if i mouse over my own then you see this delete button now as i mentioned that this chat component needs to implement an output which will pass just the id of the message that is supposed to be deleted so let's create this output now so we're going to go to our chat component and here we are going to create an output so here we're going to say message deleted and here we can say output and the output also comes from angular core and this is going to pass the id of the chat message and here we have this output now the reason or the major reason for this output is to have a similar looking api for example the input is a method the model is also a method so all of these are functions so instead of using the output decorator just like we used to do before, it's much more nicer to just use the output method just like this. 
Now that we have this message deleted, we need to call this method whenever a particular element is deleted. So we are going to go to our template and on this particular button, we are going to call a method. So we don't have a function yet, but what we can do is we can either directly emit the output or we can call a function. So here, let's say we create a new function. We call this delete message and this is going to basically receive the message. So here, or you can also receive the message ID. So let's say message ID. And here I'm going to first confirm using the confirm dialog if we really want to delete a message because for deletion actions, you should always confirm. So here we can say const response equals confirm. And here we can use the window confirm dialog. And here we can ask, do you want to delete this message? And then we can say if the response is false, we just return. We don't do anything at all. But if not, then we can delete. And here we can say this dot message deleted dot. And you can see it has the same sort of API called emit or the method called emit. And here we can say message ID. So we can send the message ID just like this. Now we can call this delete message from this click handler. So here we can say delete message and we can pass the message dot ID just like this. Now that we have put this delete message here we need to listen to this message in the room component template so here we need to listen to this message and then we need to call a function there so we're gonna go to our room component here and then if I go to the template here I can now listen to this method so here I can say message deleted this is supposed to call a function so here we can say remove message or delete message it's up to you we are going to be providing the message ID, which essentially comes in the event automatically from Angular. So here I can go and create this method right here. So here I can say something like remove message. We know that we are going to receive the message ID right here, which is going to be a string. And then all we need to do is to set the messages array, but removing the message that we have just sent. So here I can say this dot messages, which is a signal dot update. So we should be able to call the update method just like this. And here we receive the messages and then what we need to do is to do messages dot filter and then we are going to check each message so here we can say message and we are going to say message dot id not equals to the message id provided so we are filtering and we are removing the message with this id that we have just said so i can go to my template here and i can just save this file now now that is a lot of code that we have just written. I don't want it to go above your head. So what I'm going to do this, I'm going to debug this and we are going to go through this together. So I'm going to go to chat.component.ts. I'm going to put a breakpoint to the delete message. I'm also going to go to the room component TS and I'm going to put a breakpoint just on the function which is used to delete and filter. So if I go and try to delete this message, see what happens. So as soon as we click this, it comes inside the delete message inside the chat component, which is rendering the chat with the message ID and the message ID ends with 67E. Now it's going to use the confirm dialog to ask me if I want to delete it. So if I step over, you can see the message right here. Do you want to delete this message? If I say cancel, then the response is falsy or false here. So if I do this, it just returns, doesn't do anything. But if I do this again and this time I say, OK, then the response is a truthy value or true and then it goes forward. Now it's going to emit this message ID from the chat component. As we looked at in the diagram, the chat component emits the string as an output. And then this is going to go inside the room component. So if I hit play here, it's automatically going inside the room component TS file, remove message. And you can see the message ID right here ending with 67E. Now it's going to just update all the messages with this. And if you look at the call stack, as well you can see that this remove message method was called from the template from here so we are listening to the message deleted output and the output whenever that's triggered this or emitted this remove message is called and then it comes inside this function with the message id and you will also notice that here we are using event the event here is automatically handled by angular so whatever we were emitting from our chat component from here i'm gonna bring it down so this message ID essentially comes here as event and then goes here in this particular parameter. And then we are just filtering that. So if I hit play, you can see that messages go and gone now. And then if I try to disable the debugger and try to delete others, I can basically do that as well. So I can delete as many messages as I want. And whenever we just add a new message, automatically it scrolls to bottom. So now this is the whole user interface for the chat 
application. So just to summarize what we have done in the entire application using signals API is the room component creates the signal for messages. So this is the array that we have. Then we also have a new message signal that still lives in the room component, but is modified inside the chat input component right here because it's a model. Then we also use the input functions to grab the my ID and also inside here it uses the input for messages and my ID both. Then we also use the output method from the chat component whenever we delete a particular message. So we have not only used the inputs but we have used inputs, models, the two-way data binding and the output. So that's the complete package. But on top of it what we have done is and learned is that the room component which is using a model can listen via an effect to the variable that is passed as a model. So even if this changes from another component or a child component, the effect can effectively listen to it and then do what we wanted it to do. So this was a lot of things or a lot of cool things in a practical example that you just learned. So I hope that you liked the video, you learned a lot. It takes a lot of time and effort to basically prepare all of this and plan and execute this. So I would highly appreciate if you can like the video and share the video with others so more people can basically reach to this video and learn the new signal based APIs and perhaps learn more things to come as well. As always, happy coding. I'm going to see you in the next one.